Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the BGP routing JWeb learning byte. So here is the example on the slide. On this slide we have two different devices, BSRX1 and BSRX2, that will be running BGP or rather we'll need to configure BGP on. Well, actually, BGP is configured already on VSRX2, and we will only be configuring BGP on VSRX1 for the sake of time. And OSPF is already configured and working between VSRX1 and VSRX2, so there's no need to worry about getting that up and running. And then we have the user device that is connected to VSRX1. Then VSRX1 also connects to VSRX2. And then we have the DMZ server that connects with VSRX2. So with this, we want to configure BGP routing on VSRX1 using JWeb. And what we need to do is we need to configure an external BGP session with the ISP router. And then we need to configure an internal BGP session on VSRX1 that will connect with VSRX2. And after we have BGP working, we need to ensure that the user can communicate with hosts on the internet. We need to ensure that the DMZ server can communicate with hosts on the internet as well. And so let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface for VSRX1 and get this going. All right, so here is the JWeb interface for VSRX1. Let's go ahead and get to the network routing BGP workspace and this is under the configure section we need to first create a new bgp group click the create button and let's call this group ext dash bgp for external bgp and we're going to connect to the internet router that uses the autonomous system number of 65111 and then we need to go to the neighbors tab and we need to configure a static neighbor and this is going to be using IPv4. So we need to type the address for the neighbor. And we don't configure a local address here. This is a little different than for those of you who are used to configuring BGP in the CLI, whereas you would actually set the type of BGP session by setting it as external or internal. Here, there's no option for internal or external. If you do set a local address here, though, it'll set the session as an internal BGP session. So keep that in mind, since we don't want that, this is our external BGP session, we need to leave that local address field blank. And so we can leave everything else at their defaults. We won't be exporting or importing anything. Then click OK again. Now we need to configure the internal BGP session that will be between VSRX1 and VSRX2. So click the Create button. Group name, let's call this INT for internal BGP, ASN. We'll say this is the local ASN of 65333. And then select neighbors. Click static neighbors, or let's add a static neighbor. Enter the address. This is going to be the loopback address of VSRX2. And then we need to enter our local address. Now remember, adding a local address will set the BGP type to internal. And then we do need to add an export policy here. Since we will be receiving a default route from the internet provider through BGP, we need to export that into internal BGP. And so typically you do that with a next hop self policy. And that's already been configured for the sake of time. And we're just going to add that in here. We already have it configured. Under export policies, we're adding it. Click OK. We can see that under export policy that it is added. So let's click OK here. Click OK again and click OK. Now we do need to configure some global information for BGP. We need to set the local autonomous system number. So let's click the edit button for the global information. And then for the router autonomous system number, we're going to set 65333. And that's all we need to set there. Click OK. And then let's commit the configuration. Now let's go to the monitor workspace. Now this is BGP, so it's going to take possibly a minute for the BGP sessions to come up, but we can see if they're already up. Let's go ahead and click monitor, then routing, BGP information. And the good news is that the BGP sessions established relatively quickly. We can see that they've been up for 14 and 10 seconds respectively. 
We can see the BGP peer summary information. We can see there's total peers of two, total groups of two. Looking at the BGP neighbors section, we can see that information about the BGP neighbors. And we can select one of these neighbors and click details to find out more information. And we can scroll through to see the information associated with this BGP neighbor. We can see the peer type is external for this one. This is our external BGP session with the ISP router. We click the other session. This is our internal session. We can see here the peer type is set to internal. We can see the peer AS information, things like that. And so this is where you can get more information about the individual BGP sessions. And then looking at the rib summary tab, we can see that we have one active prefix, one total prefix, nothing suppressed. And so we can find out what is actually happening as far as what we're receiving in the rib for BGP. So let's click on route information. Here we can see the individual routes. We're only receiving one BGP route. I'm just going to type BGP in the protocol field to find that easily. And we can see we are receiving a default route. And then we can also type the receive protocol, BGP. We can see that we are receiving a route through BGP as well. So the last thing we need to do is test communication with the user and DMZ server devices. So to test that communication, I have a router that is split up into multiple virtual routers for the user and DMZ server. And so we will test communication using those routing instances. So let's go ahead and do that. So first we wanna make sure that the user can communicate with hosts on the internet. And we can do that, great. Now we need to do that for the DMZ users as well. So the DMZ server that is. Again, that's great. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure BGP routing using JWeb, and we demonstrated how to verify BGP routing using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.